Hello, I'm Pastor Chuck Siles, Dad, Senior Pastor of Center Points Christian Fellowship. I want to take a quick break from my teaching that I've been talking about with the millennial period, and, and I want to respond to something that I've been getting questions about, and that's about what's happening in the world today. Today's teaching is called Current Events and Bible Prophecy. And I'm really concerned about things I've been hearing lately and some Bible teachers and scholars, etc., have been saying. Now, this is not a religious or a political rant, I assure you, but I want to give you a caution to use balance, sound judgment, wisdom, biblical discernment, and common sense in the events, the current events of this day and in prophecy. I mean, some people are proclaiming that the invasion of the Ukraine by Russia is the fulfillment of biblical prophecy about the Gog and Magog War. Others are proclaiming it's the fulfillment of the Battle of Armageddon. I mean, to make a bold statement like that is the beginning of the Gog Magog War or the Battle of Armageddon is stepping out on a limb. If one is to say this is setting it up to happen sometime at a different time or in the future, it's quite a different thing. And I believe a lot of what we're seeing today is setting the stage for near future biblical prophetical events. I'll agree with that. But it's just like certain things are experimentation and the possible leading up to the mark of the beast that will happen in the tribulation period, I can agree with that too. I mean, if you're talking about uh, implanting uh, chips in your hand or forehead to be able to open doors and use the copier and make coffee at businesses like is happening in some places in the world, I've seen it already reported on several years ago. Uh, talking about uh, you know the, the progression with ATMs and, and credit cards and chips in the cards and all kinds of things. All that could lead up to that, but they are not the mark of the beast. The eventual mark that identifies the wearer with the Antichrist will have to go through many modifications and trials before it's perfected and used during that time of the tribulation. But it's not happening yet. So I want to caution everyone to really study what the Word of God says. Now, I mentioned the Gog Magog War. Now, there are specific things that the Bible says has to take place in order for the Gog Magog War to, to take place. And not all those requirements are in place yet. Are they headed that way? Yes, but they aren't there. Do I believe it will happen before the tribulation period? Yes, some scholars agree with me, some don't. But I, I think that, that through careful exegesis of the scriptures, we can see those events unfurl in the near future. And as I said before, I have a whole teaching on that subject that explains the position of Israel when they are attacked, who attacks them, and the destruction of Israel's attackers by God himself. God himself will step in and save Israel. Also, it can't be the Battle of Armageddon, because that happens at the end of the seven-year tribulation period, and we're definitely not in the tribulation period right now. So as Christians, we need to be aware of the times in which we live in, without taking everything that's happening in the news right now as the fulfillment of a particular end times prophecy, scripture, or event. Jesus Christ, he described spiraling troubles that would lead up to the rapture and the tribulation with his second coming. Matthew 24, four through eight says, and Jesus answered them, see that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will, see, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of these are but the beginning of the birth pains. See, are we seeing these events in the news stories of our times? Yes, we are. Does it mean that we can point to a specific event right now and say this is the fulfillment of a biblical prophecy event? I would have to say no. I mean, maybe not. I, I, I'm just telling you, I don't believe it is if it doesn't line up exactly as Scripture says. Because I believe the, the, the Scripture is literal and it points to events unless it says it's allegorical. But just because something seems like it's what it says in the Bible, if it doesn't line up with everything else, then that's not what the event is. It's leading up to a time, but it's not the event itself. And I mean, we need to be careful in saying that or to believe what someone else may be saying about that uh, without seeing it if it lines up with scriptures. So if someone just says, oh yes, 
uh, right now, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, it's pointing right now the the Battle of Arm or Armageddon, or it's the Gog Magog War. No, it's not. I'm sorry to say that, but I cannot see it line up with the scriptures where the scripture says certain things need to happen. Like, for instance, Gog Magog War. It has to show Israel without walls and 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 borders and and fences. And right now, they've got a lot of them. But there's something that's going to happen that will take care of that. Will then allow. Gog and Magog to come against them and then God will take care of them. He'll take care, wipe them out, and the situation will be turned on those people that come to attack Israel. In 1947, when the United Nations proclaimed that the Jews would have their own nation, and then in 1948 it came about and Israel was a nation again, after almost 2,000 years, we can point to that event and say, yes, it directly fulfilled a prophetic event of the Bible. Because the Bible talks about that. And see, and then Luke 21, 36 says, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all those things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. I mean, what is Christ telling Christians to watch? Why should we watch for current events? Well, where, where we are right now in the panorama of prophecies being fulfilled in these end times, are they happening? Well, watching the fulfillment of prophecy in the current events or of news can be good, but we have to be careful of interpreting those specific events as they happen because the Lord is telling us to watch about what is happening in our times. Jesus Christ and the prophets of the Bible gave a broad overview of the events that would happen before Jesus was returned to earth. Now, some prophecies describe trends that develop over a long period of time, and then there's a crescendo at the end. Many other prophecies detail a quick succession of events that will suddenly occur in the last few years of the end times. Now, watching these prophecies being fulfilled is part of what Jesus meant when he told his followers to watch and pray. The other part, which is even more important, is his call for us to maintain spiritual readiness at all times. We must watch our own spiritual condition as well and not be confused by the current events that are swirling around us, those that are swirling in the news and everyone's talking about. Well, it's important to pay attention, but I will tell you throughout history, there have been many people and event uh, events and things that political events, uh, kingdoms, uh, nations that people have pointed to as the end times. Many people have pointed out to uh, Hitler and Mussolini and Mao Zedong and all these other people as the Antichrist, but they were not. Are they types of the Antichrist? Yes. Are they dictators? Yes. But I will tell you, they were not the Antichrist. But of course, yes, it's all a move towards the end times. It's what it's going to be like. I mean, what to watch in prophecy in the news is difficult. And really, it requires Holy Spirit-directed discernment. In the discordance of news that is broadcast to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, what are we supposed to watch? I mean, it's impossible to watch it all. And, and too much of what is being pushed out by the news media can be frivolous, stimulating, degrading, divisive, depressing, and downright harmful to our well, mental well-being. Because I will tell you, if you watch it too much, you're going to get depressed. And what sells stories? It's all the depressing things that are happening in the world. So instead of trying to drink from the fire hose of information, we need to have a strategy for collecting what is most important. Well, where should we focus our attention? We need to focus on what is true. Too many news and opinion outlets slant their coverage or are willing to publish unverified stories. We need to focus on the highest quality journalism across the center of the spectrum of sources, which truthfully uh, tell us what's going on. And to truthfully understand what's going on, it's really hard to find. Be aware of the biases of the extreme leaning media. Now note the facts that are, that are agreed on by everyone, which may also be hard to find because sometimes people will believe a lie because it's told. I've had people tell me, oh, well, if it's on the internet, it must be true. They wouldn't publish lies. Let me tell you, it happens all the time. And beware of the modern industry of fake news. Some people go, oh, there you go on fake news. No, no, listen to me. 
Uh, beware of the modern industry of fake news that began with nothing more than sinister uh, uh, things that they did. It wasn't sinister. It was funny. Uh, it, it, was just, it was not sinister. It was satire and spoofs for fun reading. There is, a, there is an organization that has one right now. It's a Christian organization. And some people say, oh, what, look at what they're saying. Oh, we got to follow it. No, it's a spoof on things. It's satire. See, originally, creators of fake news found that they could capture much more interest and they could make more money through automated advertising that rewards high traffic to their internet sites. So in response, uh, these content mills began to produce these bizarre sounding headlines and articles exploiting social media outlets for the profits generated by the increased social shares and page views. Then because of the political benefits of opponents and the respected government sources and, and the established media outlets, they were often at the center of the controversy, spinning false, impartially politically charged fabrications and hit pieces. Now, not everyone was doing it, understand that, but this is happening and it's been happening with fake news swimming in the same electronic currents as everyday exaggerations, hard charging opinion and political exaggeration. The term is now being used to describe virtually any inconvenient news, fact or opinion, legitimate or not, by those of other political camps, religious fringes, cults, and worldviews. I mean, don't get me started on the very f large social media sites that hire fact checkers who, who have no background in what they're checking. I mean, there is one that has, uh, they're checking medical uh, information and they have no medical training. They don't even check their own facts. Like, like the company that, that, that this one social media giant used, and they labeled a well-researched and peer-reviewed article written by England's British Medical Journal, which is highly respected, and began publishing on October 3rd, 1840. And this particular uh, British medical, medical Journal, I mean, they're the first ones back in the 1800s that talked about the importance uh, and, the, and the use of... of um, and as, uh, was it um, using, uh, inf well, my mind just went blank, sorry. Uh, it was, it's, they used um, anesthesia. That's, that's the word I was looking for. They used anesthesia on patients so that they would not wake up during the, uh, the operation and have pain. Okay, that is a very well-respected journal. And this, this company labeled it with words like flaws reviewed without naming one flaw or false statement. They also listed things like hoax alert, assertions about wrong information, false information, and calling the British Medical Journal a news blog. See, you gotta be careful of being aware what is fact and what is fiction in the news. And when someone starts uh, saying that, that they know all about medical stuff and then they don't have any background on it and they're reporting on it, you gotta be careful. Check the background of things. Look into it yourself. Because I'll tell you, if I was going to go into surgery, I would want anesthesia. And if the British Medical Journal, who has found out all kinds of things, and they have peer-reviewed by all kinds of doctors, I, I would have a hard time uh, not believing everything that they wrote down. You, you, but you still want to check it out for yourself. See, because when we have all this swirling information, and it's hard to tell whether it's true or not, what we need to do is listen, balance it, but then focus on what the Bible focuses on. We need to focus on the areas that the Bible focuses on. End time biblical prophecy primarily focuses on the rapture, the Middle East, the tribulation, with its multinational government rising up out of Europe, the rise and fall of the Antichrist, and the false prophet, and on the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel, the second coming of Christ, the millennium, and so forth. It also involves threats to human existence and a horrendous moral decline that provokes God's wrath. The moral decline of this world has expanded so much in the last several years, and it's only getting worse. The Bible shows that humanity's is continually in a downward slide into moral confusion and depravity, and it leads to all the end time curses and plagues. There's many scriptures on that. Now, 
What does God want us to passively watch prophecy in the news? Does he want us to do that? Or does he want us to do more? He wants us to do more. Should we study prophecy? Yes, we need to watch for the signs of the times to know the end of time as we know is soon to occur. Why should we watch prophecy in the current events in the news? Well, although Christians should keep an eye on news and trends, we don't have to become news experts or fixate on prophecy at every little event that's happening and try to fit into prophecy, above all else that we're supposed to do. We aren't to become so puffed up with knowledge that we think we know more than everyone else, and we degrade people because they're not in the know. Nor should we desperately try to figure out the day, the hour of Christ's return, which I've repeatedly seen people to do. I've seen people sell their businesses, their homes, and start saying, okay, on this day, Christ is coming. And then he didn't. And then they said, oh, I made a mistake. It's really this day. And then they didn't. Well, let me tell you, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 36, but at that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. Watching the fulfillment of prophecy in the news is intended to accomplish much more of an important purpose. We are to watch for prophecy in the current events so that we won't be deceived. Jesus gives warnings about counterfeit religion and false prophecies in Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 8, and Matthew 24, verses 23 through 25. We are to watch for prophecy in the current events so we'll endure the times. The forewarning about persecution and troubles is designed to help us to endure to the end. We're to watch prophecy in the news so we know what to do. And I will tell you, God gave specific instructions to people. And, and then you look at other responsibilities. They fall on the entire church. The warnings and the promises of the coming wonderful kingdom of God are not just for us. They should motivate us to support the effort to share the good news of the kingdom found in Matthew 24, 14, which says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. We are to watch prophecy in the current events so we can prepare people for salvation and the end times and that we will also be prepared. We must not be complacent because Christ warns us to be the faithful and the wise servant who works diligently and serves wholeheartedly in Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 through 47. In 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, the apostle Peter wrote that a knowledge of prophecy should provoke us to, to strive to be better people in holy conduct and godliness. We must be spiritually prepared at all times. We don't know when the Lord is coming. We don't know when the rapture will take place, but it will happen suddenly. And I'll tell you with the rapture, there is nothing that says has to be done before that happens. It could happen at any time. And remember, the rapture does not start the tribulation period. The tribulation period is when the Antichrist signs the agreement with Israel. So we look to biblical prophecy so that we have hope. And at the end of the Bible, God encourages us. He says, behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. You can see that in Revelation 22, 7. So knowing prophecy and striving to recognize its fulfillment are meant to motivate us to change, to always be seeking the kingdom of God and to always be preparing to meet God, the creator of all things, and to serve him faithfully. Looking at the many prerequisites to the end times that are already in place, that's okay. We can look and see that. There are certain things that will have to take place before other things will take place. It shows that the world has not yet entered the time known as the Great Tribulation. We can tell because certain events have not taken place. We need to be discerning towards the signs of the times. And finally, we need to be cautious trying to identify current events in prophecy. Like any aspect of life, watching prophecy in current events on the earth can have its drawbacks. There are some cautions that will help us with the dangers of that. First of all, consider all the relevant prophecies. Reading one verse out of a context can be misleading. It can lead us to a misunderstanding. 
So we can't just read one scripture. We have to look and see what it says about it in the context that it's written. We need to recognize what is clearly stated in scripture versus what is speculation. Speculation can be exciting, but can lead to misunderstandings and discouragement when a speculation proves to be wrong. Don't assume unverified news reports are completely accurate. Compare what varied news sources say and not one-sided leading to the extreme. Don't let watching prophecy in the news or in all the current events that are happening around us consume all of our time and our attention. Make sure to put uh, such you know, things as God's priority as the top. What are God's priorities for our life? It's God, it's our family, it's our job. We need to remember to take care of our families. And remember the purposes of prophecy. Watching the fulfillment of prophecy should help motivate us to watch our own spiritual condition. God wants us to change, to become more like him, and to be ready to serve with Jesus Christ. And that until he calls us to come home in the rapture, we need to be prepared. He wants people to spread the gospel so many will be saved. It will also leave a warning for those left behind that don't accept Christ after that event until that happens, if they're not in this time now and they don't accept Christ, once the rapture hits, they're going to have a much harder time living in this world. So after that event takes place and the tribulation starts, and then they need the opportunity to accept Christ. So we need to plant the seeds and let God do the watering and bring the harvest in of those people that will be saved during the, the tribulation. Because, see, they will still have an opportunity to know Christ leading up to a second coming, and we need to plant those seeds now. And as I said at the beginning, we need to use caution, balance, sound judgment, wisdom, biblical discernment, and common sense when interpreting biblical prophecy in current events. Many of our events are leading us to the fulfillment of prophetic scripture and those scriptural passages that talk about the future but they may not be the fulfillment of themselves right now. So don't believe what everyone tells you up front. Check out what the Bible says for itself. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a worker who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. Now, are current events right now taking place? Are they fulfilling these events? I would have to say no. Why? Because there's certain events that take place in the Bible that talk about where Israel should be when the Gog Magog war hits. And those aren't happening right now. And so therefore we understand that soon that will happen. And there's another event that I believe that I talked about is Psalms 83 war, which I have the teaching on as well, that after I'm through with these teachings, I'm gonna go back in and, and talk about those. Those leading up to what's going to take place in the future, the near future, I believe. But we need to pay attention, read what the Word of God says, look at the current events, and even if it's some big name talking about who what these events are going to be and what's going to happen, take them, and I, I'm seriously, take them with prayer and look at what the Bible says and then move on. And understand, there, there, some of these events may take place and we will see them. I believe we, that we're going to see them before the tribulation happens. Sorry if I'm talking really fast, but I'm really passionate about that, that we need to have balance, that we're not led astray by teachers, even well-meaning teachers. So look at what the Bible says, read it for yourself, weigh the evidence, and then make your decision. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today for allowing us to be discerning Christians, those that rightly divide the word of truth, that look into your word, see what's taking place, and, and not get afraid or become afraid or, or scared of what's taking place right now. Because God, you have everything in control. Nothing happens that you don't allow to happen because many things will take place as your prophecies show in this world. And they can't happen unless something takes place that will make them happen. And you've said they would. So Lord, let us look at the word of God, trust in what it says, and be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Thank you. Thank you for the knowledge that you've given us and the wisdom. 
We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In your precious name we pray. Amen. And understand something about me. When it comes to prophecy, when it comes to reading the Word of God, I really want to know what the Word says. I don't like to dump on people or upon their, their interpretations. It's just that sometimes uh, when it doesn't line up with Scripture, I just want to make sure that it does. And if it doesn't, then that's not what the Bible is saying. So look closely at those things. It's like all the prophecies of Christ. Christ fit to a T the prophecies. I mean, when they, when they in, in the Psalms, when it talked about crucifixion, Christ's crucifixion, it hadn't even been invented yet, but it talked about it. And so therefore, we need to understand that when we see the things take place in prophecy, that God has shown us that we do it the right way. I, I just want to share that with you uh, because we need to have an open heart. And, and if we're wrong, okay, we admit it and we move on. But I just don't want you to be led astray or be confused or say something that's not really accurate and then feel weird about it afterwards. <laughs> so uh, I, I thank you really for joining in with me today for this message. To find out more about Center Points Christian Fellowship, visit our website at www.centerpoints.org. And remember, on our website, in the narrative, uh, in YouTube, and on Facebook, you can find the link to our YouTube channel with all our videos, messages recorded so far, including this one. I'm working on other ways that we can connect as well. But you can sign up with our for our weekly newsletter updates, uh, my blog, find out about how to join us on Wednesday night Bible study and women's uh, Thursday morning Bible study. I mentioned, you know, uh, was it different songs that we use for our worship on Sundays? And, you know, you can get all that by sending me an email and requesting it at info at centerpoints.org and I'd love to add you to that list. So until I see you again, stay safe and may God bless you and have a great day.